When uh, using compatibility to find our uh, axial load response, or axial versus strain load uh, response, um, we, it's easiest if we set up a table. So what we'll do first, is, as we said in the previous video, is we'll assume some strain. And uh, let's say we're in uh, compression here. So uh, because of our compatibility and assuming that there's no slip, our steel strain is going to be equal to uh, whatever strain our section is under. And we can say the same thing for our concrete. So then we'll go from our steel strain to stress uh, by taking our uh, steel strain times our uh, steel modulus as long as we're under yield. We can move from, so if we do that here, we'll get a steel stress of 29 KSI. Then we move from our stress to force by taking our stress times our area. So if we say that our steel area is um, equal to 5.08 inches. If we say our concrete area is equal to uh, 138.92 square inches, like, like in the uh, lecture, then we'll find our steel force then is 147.3 kips. So we can do the same thing with our um, concrete. So it's a little different here because um, we're going to use an actual expression to go from EC to FC. Um, so the expression that uh, we can use, or one of the expressions is um, from Todeschini. So we'll say our FC is equal to two times our F prime C times EC over epsilon naught divided by 1 plus epsilon c over epsilon naught squared. So we can use that here to go from EC to FC. And this will give us around um, 3 KSI. So then we can go from FC to PC just by taking our FC times our concrete area, which in this case will get 416.7 kips. And then like we said before, our P total will just be our summation of our P's, or in this case, just our concrete plus our steel, which will be uh, 564 um, kips. So the other points of interest will be um, when we have our maximum concrete compressive st uh, stress, when we have our steel yielding, uh, which we'll say is around 0 .00207 for 60 KSI, uh, when our concrete fails in compression, and then a point immediately after Um, so our concrete will drop off. And then uh, some other point later. So we'll need to remember that um, after our, our steel yields, we're going to have 60 KSI. And we'll assume that that 60 KSI runs the rest of the way down. Um, and then after our concrete fails, we're going to have zero KSI contribution that'll run the rest of the way down. So uh, that's how we can, uh, I guess, determine our uh, load versus uh, strain response uh, using a table.